Hey, it's Magenta here from Supply Frame Design Lab, and today I'm at Machine Histories in Los Angeles, where Jason and Steven are going to show us their fabrication facilities. So I heard about these guys through a previous resident of ours, Bruce, and then I sort of looked you guys up online and got really interested in the projects you guys were working on. I love sort of how you guys go between experimental and your client-based work and you're really open to showing your processes and stuff you work on, which is super cool. And then also is super intrigued by the five axis machine. Mm -hmm. Can't lie, that like caught my attention. It's really interesting and I wanted to learn more about. So. Great, great. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're definitely uh, driven by experimenting with process. I mean, I think that that's our motivation for trying to get a place together is really just to have the, ca the, the capacity to explore different tools and uh, different workflows that might land, um, you know, on, just purely on a whim. I was at Art Center, and uh, you know, being there was a big eye opener for me. I hadn't seen a lot of the things that were happening. And I saw Jason, and everyone kind of knew who he was because he ran the lab there, and I knew that the lab is where you got to be. Like that's kind of the future of things. I liked what he was doing there as a designer too and I, I and he helped um, design some things at my house and you know it was definitely just uh, pretty fun to have somebody that you can share some ideas with. Yeah and, and then we started thinking why are we doing this there we could do this for ourselves and at that point I had uh, moved into this building and it was like shining back in those days. There wasn't anybody around here. It was an industrial wasteland kind of. So I just begged them for a space and they were refining the building and they're like, okay, we'll give you, you know, this chunk for a pretty decent price, but you gotta sign at least like today. We got the three axis machine, the vacuum former, uh, laser cutter is in the back. Um, and that, that was the crux of the, the base of a, 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 a shop. Little shop, yeah. yeah. And we've added on since then. Here, uh, three axis, uh, the machine has um, a tool changer, and you know we definitely explore a lot of different types of tools, depend on that, it's essential, really. Yeah. This is the five axis, and this you can kind of work in the round. Yeah. So you can access your part from five sides. If you think of a box, you can attack that box from five different directions. I've got the ability to kind of control this texture. I am basically going to take that information on that three on, on that uh, XY plane and kind of wrap it to uh, a three-dimensional surface that I can run on onto the uh, five axis. This is this is how the pattern's happening with this kind of block of information. Um, so I'm able to uh, a, alter that sine wave and there's a couple drops of water that's being generated. This is kind of a puddle of water and uh, there's a couple uh, there's a couple of tractor points within that puddle and those I can change the position of those points and those will alter uh, uh, the pull on that surface. You can do everything from this panel um, you could really like type all that info. That's what they used to do. They would, you know, make a, a simple program right here. You know, they type it in. They'd be like X, you know, 20, Y, 30, and then next position, they would type that all in. And yeah, it's absolute insanity. There was a time when we did a lot more diverse projects. Now it's more mm. art, larger scale architectural type projects. That seems to be for the past two, three years, that's like the bread and butter. Working with some artists, that's some of my favorite stuff because they have the most insane idea. Right. And like we've worked with like, uh, like Roman Coppola before and 
just some crazy, like it's just crazy. And you're sitting there listening to them and then you fall into this thing. You're like, yeah, we absolutely have to do that. And why wouldn't we be doing this? And you get so entrenched and just because they are so passionate about it. And I, I really like that part, having, having, they're playing a part in having to, you know, listen to some outlandish thing and how, how much they want to see this thing come into fruition and, and then to get behind it and make it happen for them. I think that's a pretty fulfilling mm -hmm. thing to do. Mm -hmm. You were saying sometimes you use the vacuum former for mold making. What mm -hmm. sort of uh, like applications have you um, used the mold for? Or well, I could show you over here. Okay. So these are these are form liners, mm -hmm. and there's going to be some larger, con like really concrete, not just walls, but it ends up making a full shape. Oh, okay. So you're gonna pour concrete. Or yeah, the like okay, architectural sure. scale project. Yeah. Uh, and do you so know how many panels are gonna make up the final? There's four. There's architecture. 40 panels, but they're approximately four by eight. Okay, is this for the stadium? Yes. You guys are talking about? Okay, yeah. awesome. Lately, we've been talking about a, a membrane press, which seems like a super cool technology because you can potentially develop your own plastic patterns. Uh, you can print, and so you can work gra more graphically and dimensionally. And that could be a pretty exciting piece of technology to have. And so I think it's things that we see that we see some kind of spark there. You know, and if and if it's like, I, it's not that it's justified. Like, mm -hmm. there's no reason to have that machine necessarily, but I think that we can figure out a reason for it. So we're going to try to work towards getting yeah. it. I think a lot of architects are more and more excited about variability, and just making things that are non-standardized. So w the this this uh, 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 texture, um, you know, will require many many sheets that are each unique in order to make that one particular shape come to life. So I think, uh, you know, the world's starting to change in the way that it looks because of these tools, because creative people, you know, now can make shapes that are just very different than yeah. they were 50, 100 years ago.